set up for that. So I think we're going to read some more donations. Kratos Granola gave us $75 saying, save the frames. Been watching GDQs for years, but this is just my second donation. Hoping to make it one in the future. Good luck to all the runners. Thanks, Kratos Granola. Ram Val gave us $10 saying, good morning from Germany. Almost watched the whole night, and now it's 8 o'clock in Germany. Eating breakfast and drinking coffee in Germany. So now is the best time for more runs. He didn't actually say that third in Germany part. I just thought I'd add that. Carlito NSP gave us $5 saying, is it just me, or is it impossible to world record this game, since no matter how fast you are, Goofy is faster. That just means that Goofy has the world record, Carlito NSP. Tina Hack 95 gave us $15 saying, I had to donate for the hottest speed tech I've ever seen. Donation goes to runner's choice. I suspect that the uh, runner would want you to donate to Mini. But what do I know? Gramora gave us $25 saying, Yo, Nirum, good luck. Have fun and don't forget to berserk Raidya, or whatever the Shipu Iron Leaguer equivalent is. Put this toward Nirum's choice. We'll have to find out what that is. And as a reminder, one of our sponsors this year at HDQ 2017 is Chrono GG. Chrono GG sells one awesome game every day, and they partner directly with game developers so you know exactly where your keys are coming from. And proceeds from GDQ featured titles will benefit the Prevent, Prevent Cancer Foundation. Check them out at www.chrono.gg slash AGDQ. Oh boy, after Jazz Jack, it looks like we're hitting a, a PlayStation 1 block. We're going to have Intelligent Q, a Jumping Flash 2, Little, Little Big Planet 3. I'm a big fan of uh, Jumping Flash 2, personally. That was one of my early PS1 games. We got $10 from Gerard SAS saying, you are all amazing people and doing a great thing. So glad a community like you exists. Makes me glad people like you come together and do this. We got uh, five dollars from Anonymous saying the world needs more good things to happen. I agree, Anonymous. Another Anonymous donator for five dollars said, "What a wonderful cause this is! Been watching for years. First time donating. Can I see smiles in the chat? Would make my night." Finally, let's go one million plus in donations. I hope we make it, Anonymous. We got $20 from Sheridan Barber saying, I lost my grandfather to cancer exactly eight years ago. He was a bright and loving man who loved every one of his grandkids. Thank you for doing what you do. It gives me peace of mind. You're welcome, Sheridan Barber, and thank you for do your donation. Jode0809 gave us $5 saying, First time watching GDQ. Awesome show. Love from Denmark. I'm feeling the love, Jode. Kamikaze H2OMLN gave us $5 saying, college student checking in here. Saw my father, saw my grandfather pass in front of my eyes this summer to cancer. Truly awful, and I hope that my little bit helps someone in need. Save the animals. From Indian Lakes gave us $5 saying, it may not be a lot, but it's something. What a wonderful stream for a wonderful cause, Mon money and time well spent. Thank you from Indian Lakes. Every little bit helps. Zerg Rarity gave us $5, saying, 
I got an annuity check in early, allowing me to donate far earlier than I was expected. I absolutely love speedruns, and am planning on bringing some friends one year to give some good support to the late night runners who almost never have anyone in the crowd to cheer them on. I hope you do that, Zerg Rarity. We could use more help in the midnight shifts like this. Jeff Jones gave us $25, saying, glad I could help out for an awesome cause. I appreciate it, Jeff. All right, my shift is over. I'm going to turn it over to Get A Whale. But thanks, everybody. This is DS Dad signing off. I'll see you on Wednesday. Hello guys, my name is Get A Whale. I'm here with you for the next little while through this early morning block. A couple donations here that have come in. We have a $100 donation from Perps JL. It says, my mom passed away from breast cancer about 10 and a half years ago when I was 12. Birthday's on the 31st. She always liked playing video games with me whenever I asked. So this goes out to her. Since this event is all about teamwork and helping others, clearly Mario needs Flavio's help in opening the thousand year door. And we have a donation of $15 from Scaro, who says, I lost my father to cancer 15 years ago. I have fond memories of playing Jazz Jackrabbit on his computer. Very excited to see the game at AGDQ. Save the frames, kill the animals. Speaking of Jazz Jackrabbit, going to kick it over to Jazz Jackrabbit. Captain Clever. Jazz Jackrabbit was created by Arjan Bruce Bruce and uh, Cliff Klozinski, also known as Cliffy B, who went on to make, uh, you know, like Unreal Tournament and Gears of War and all that stuff. And the two of them are actually, uh, they made a new studio called Boss Key Productions. So if you want to see what they're making 20 years later after this gem, um, maybe check that out. Anyway, I'm ready to go. Um, I guess I'll just do a quick old countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, so welcome to Jazz Jackrabbit, or as I sometimes just call it, Sonic with guns, because uh, that's, you know, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, Jazz Jackrabbit is actually more heavily inspired by the Amiga game Zool, if anybody happens to know that. There was a, a DOS port for that, but it wasn't, it wasn't that good. <laughs> but uh, the Amiga game oh, is, uh, is quite good, and it's the reason that you can see a lot of uh, inspiration in just the movement in the PC version of 
um, playing a game that's like Sonic. And you can also see something of a, of a Mega Man inspiration with the lemons that I'm shooting, so that's cool too. Um, the objective of this game, of course, is to go as fast as possible uh, to reach every single exit. Uh, there are going to be six episodes, three worlds in each episode, and two stages in each world. Uh, for a total of 36, we're going to be finishing them rather quickly. And you can notice that we even have our, our super speed. Uh, it's really difficult to control this. Um, certainly, right now, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. But there are going to be stages where it's rather complicated in situations like this to make sure that I'm going exactly where I need to go. Um, in order to finish the level, I have to shoot the signpost. And then I have to press exactly at the right point with my gun to make sure that I am exiting as soon as possible. Now, the music in this game is... I find it quite iconic. It was composed by Robert A. Allen. A lot of people who remember Epic Mega Games music probably remember Alexander Brandon, um, who came onto the scene with uh, Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 as well as games like Unreal. Um, but Robert A. Allen was the original designer for the uh, Jazz Jack Rabbit soundtrack, and that's the one that I tend to remember, though certainly Alexander Brandon made a lot of good music, especially in games like Tyrion. Um, tube Electric, we just have some pipes that move us around and stuff. It's very it's like half auto scroller so it's not too bad but um interestingly wikipedia calls this kind of music acid jazz now i don't i don't actually know music genres but i just found that kind of interesting so we go fast in this game not only do we run fast in this game we also shoot fast in fact you can shoot 30 frames per second if you can handle it um my spam speed is maxes out at r roughly 11 or so um, which is still pretty fast. Um, most people probably aren't going to go more than, say, like seven or eight. But um, it helps a lot on situations like bosses. Good. All right. uh, there are several weapon types in this game, which well, I will go over in due time. Oh, cool, I actually made that. <laughs> and um, they all do the same damage, which is kind of funny. But um, they each have their own utility purposes. For instance, this weapon is basically the blaster, except it shoots, uh, it shoots faster, quickly, more, you know, more speed coming out. And additionally, it's got a bigger hitbox. For instance, my normal pea shooter wouldn't actually be hitting these guys as I travel through, um, which would be a big pain in the butt. Uh, we also have something called the RF missile, which uh, oh, good. Um, which fires two projectiles, which makes it ideal, because in a world where everything deals the same damage, having more projectiles on the screen to attack something therefore hurts more. Um, and they also shoot slightly up and down, which is occasionally useful to just hit things that we can't quite hit in a straight line. Uh, there's also the launcher, which is we're going to be using in just a moment. Um, and the launcher is just, it just flails around, as we will see in just a moment. Um, and I love the noise that they make too. It's, it's like, it's not even a weapon, but okay, great, we're killing things with it. Um, attempting to play this game quickly is rather difficult, but incredibly rewarding. Honestly, if I had to say this game as a casual playthrough, it's, it's pretty good. But when you're actually playing like super fast and just running around at the speed of uh, fast, um, come on. It's, uh, it's, it's very fun. There, there's a lot of special techniques that we can perform in this game to just move as quickly as possible. And because we're moving fast and we build up our acceleration very quickly, um, it's just a game where as the, the longer that you're going fast, the, the more fun you're having, basically. And additionally, uh, if you're looking for them, you can find lots of invincibilities in these levels, and it makes it so you don't have to worry about the enemies, which is quite nice. Uh, we're coming up on the... Okay, let me just make sure I don't fall down. Um, we're coming up on the first guardian or boss of the game. Good. Excellent driving music there, but we won't hear it for very long because this guy's going to just go right down. There we go. That was pretty good. Uh, we have to position ourselves exactly so that the left part of the boss is in the center of the screen. Um, and that just makes it so that when the screen has to recenter to finish... Sorry. I just picked the wrong episode. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, there we go. It's just so slow right there. I just, I'm expecting things to go fast, and it's like, ugh. Okay, great. So episode two really starts to pick things up. In fact, I would call this one of the harder episodes in this six-episode run. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, 
I, I will say that it's slightly difficult to commentate when you're trying to spam and also keep track of everything on the screen at the same time. But um, Letney, by the way, is Intel backwards. You can see all of the electronics and stuff. So uh, a lot of the names in this game, the worlds, have puns and stuff. One, two. Okay, good. Two for two. Um, a lot of the tricks that happen in this game are just kind of minute, but they really add up over the course of the run. And uh, generally, I don't want to be getting hit unless I am moving forward when I do get hit. Uh, this game has damage boosts, which is really cool, and it, it helps increase the speed of the game, because sometimes you're just not going to get past an enemy very easily. Um, so you just have to make sure that you, when, when you have to face that enemy, that you're going to just keep moving forward regardless. Whoop. Okay. Well, I used my shield there. Uh, the shield allows for a one-time hit against enemies. If you get hit with a hazard on it, you actually still take the, the, the flying back motion. But uh, at least you don't take the hit. So, good. Okay, so Technoir is a very technical level. I actually performed a thing right there. Um, when Jazz is running, his hitbox is slightly lower than normal. So you want to make sure that you're actually running underneath certain stuff. So this is going to be a damage boot. That was going to be a damage boost. Let me try the next one. Okay, good. One for two. Ain't too shabby. All right. Now here's a timed jump. Ugh, there we go. That skips a good portion of that level. And then we get to meet Mr. Parrot. Or Miss, I, don't, I don't even know if it has a gender, but whatever. It's a parrot. It, uh, it shoots things that, that we shoot, uh, but mostly it's used as an extra hit. So in this particular case, it will probably just be used as an extra hit. Okay, I made it through that. <laughs> That's a bit complicated to, to fit through that area. I am going a bit slower than that. Okay, we're fine, we're fine. But coming up is a very, very specific trick. I hope I get it. Yes, excellent. That is a 10 second time save and, oh boy, it is not easy to hit. All right. There we go, damage boost. Oh, I almost got to it. Ideally, you want a damage boost on a later turtle so you can get past the other one. But uh, that one, that went rather well. That went rather well. That I have a lot of trouble. A lot of runs just die right there because 10 seconds is a huge time loss. So, all right, Orbitus. Uh, Orbitus is is a very mean level for a few reasons. Oh. Uh, the bouncers here, well, they're, they're clearly bouncing me around. They also make me move up slightly, so I'm using that to just gain some distance there. And you glitch it out if you take damage and then end up in a bouncer. The game just freaks out and just sends you going flying every which way. So let me see if I can get this. Good. All right. I'm in there. Wait. Ah, come on. Get up there. Damage boost. Good. Wait for that guy. Great. Excellent. All right, so sometimes you can fit through the cracks of these bouncers, um, which is just kind of weird, but it works. So I, I of course, I'm going to use it. Oh, and I'll talk about it when I have a little bit later time. Come on. Okay, good. Still made it. Um, damage boost for these guys. Great. Oh, dude. Freaking four hits on that guy. Okay. And now for the annoying part of Orbitus. These stupid platforms right here. These guys will just pick you up at the worst times. Let's see if I can, come on. Okay, good, that, that was that was nice of the game, basically. And we actually got to keep the parrot, which means that we can potentially make the boss battle a little bit faster. Um, but Orbit, I mean, we're just kind of flying right here. Orbitus is just very mean because of the bouncers. I just don't touch anything on those bouncers. You can make it go ever so slightly faster if you if you manage to um, double up on movement with the arrow keys. Come on. Nice, got him before he hit me. Very cool. That's the boss that has the second most HP of any other one. And I forgot the center screen. Whatever, I was just really happy that I got it. Um, so straight on episode three, at this point the run um, well, it's, I mean, it's still really intense, but uh, it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not as like, okay, I'm not going to lose the run anymore. Great. Fanalint has, um, it has, it doesn't quite have bouncers, but they push you around. It's the fans, basically. We saw that on uh, Letney, though 
briefly. I, I didn't even get the time to talk about it, but there's a lot of things that push you and pull you around in this game. And one thing you can do to counteract it is if it's going to push you up or pull you uh, up, then you can use the down key to actually bring yourself and force yourself downwards. So, pretty cool. So we, we make sure to use that in certain situations because otherwise you're just going to get stuck in like an infinite loop of, of being stuck. So. Uh, this is the force shield. The force shield is incredibly handy. It, unfortunately, we only get it a couple of times. But the force shield works specially different than the one shield. Um, the first thing is that when you get hit with a hazard, uh, you actually get invincibility frames with it, which is quite, ah, well, I lost it for the next spot. But um, when you get it for the, the hazards, that means you can just kind of run through stuff. As you notice, when you, uh, when you kill enemies with it, it just kind of bounces the enemy around. Damage boost, good. OK. Thank you. I just <laughs> wanted to absolutely make sure I get that. I get that far less than I should. Come on, up we go. It's a really quick level when it goes well, and it's going pretty well. But you'll notice a lot of these levels just kind of zoom by early. I mean, we're already done. This is a surprisingly non-linear game um, for all of the running fast that you do. And then speaking of fast, bam. All right. Now there's time for like a quick donation here. Yeah, we can do a quick donation. A lot of call-outs here for you, uh, Captain Clever. I have $44 here from Toad the Toad. It says, I have to show some support for my favorite streamer, Captain Clever. <laughs> gotta go fast, gotta stop cancer, gotta save the animals. And one more quick one as well, uh, saying $20 here from Brian Porter, saying I have a lot of fond memories playing Jazz Jackrabbit as a child. So make sure to stay up to watch this run. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. So fortunately, I actually had a shield there. And thank you very much for the donations, by the way. Very glad to hear people like this game and like to happen to like my stream. <laughs> All right, make this jump here, good. Mega Air Base, just, you see these giant rockets and you see these guys with their lasers. Um, they have multiple hits. You don't actually see a lot of enemies in this game that, that take more than one hit to kill. Um, and as it turns out, on the very hardest difficulty on Turbo, every enemy gets one extra hit point, including the enemies that only had one hit point, which makes like the whole game just so much harder. And then everything has to be finished in like four minutes, which is just utterly ridiculous. Good. All right. So the launchers come in a bit handy on these guys right here. Good. And then I can just shoot. Bam. OK, great. And then we're going to. Of course it would show up. Another speedy section here. Hopefully I'll get it in time. Um, as it turns out, the reason we play on medium difficulty is because it's, a, it's an excellent combination between uh, enemy placement, amount of health, and also speed you get from your super speed bonus. As it turns out, um, the harder the difficulty, the faster you go with your super speed, um, which, if anything, makes it harder. So, it, I mean, OK, it's kind of a reward, but at the same time, you just have to play exponentially better in order to make any real use out of it. Uh, there's a number of, of super fast locations where it's incredibly difficult to actually move in those spots. All right, right here, I'm going to keep the screen uh, focused down in order to make these enemies actually appear at decent locations. If you try to go down here and you don't scroll the screen down, they will all be exactly in the wrong spots, and you will just take damage until you die. So that's great. Um, so we avoid that, pretty much. Come on, there we go. Okay, coming up on third boss. This boss will be ideally handled if I can defeat him before he turns around. So let's hope for that. Very good, pretty good. All right, episode four. Uh, this is the episode I call the boring episode because it's pretty boring. But this the super fast spot at the beginning is quite fun. So we're just going to fall really far down. Spam, bam, up, oh, up, oh, come on. There we go. Another one, and the damage boost on, ah, almost. That's a really hard damage boost to time correctly. But trying to go fast in these locations is not easy, and especially hitting that right there. Not easy to pull off. I'm going to try to go for a, a cool bounce here. Ah, not quite. I'll try it once more. And up we go, yeah. That's just fun looking. Honestly, the time save is probably minimal because you have to set it up compared to just going around. But it looks cool. And 
this is like Sonic with guns, so of course it's got to look cool. Oh, this would be a good place for a donation. This is a fairly boring level. Sure. Well, I have a donation here from Flurry72. Five dollars. Says, hi, Captain Clever. Been watching you play at GDQs since I saw you play the Commander Keens a couple of years ago. I always wait till you're playing to donate and have had it read during your run every year. <laughs> Love what you do. Everyone running GDQ does. Thank you for helping make an awesome event even more awesome. Looking forward to the run. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, the next level is the ice stage. Fun fact, uh, this game is so slippery that it doesn't actually need its own ice physics. They just changed the animations to make it look like it's slippery, but the game is actually playing exactly the same. <laughs> so that's always fun. Come up. Well, I damage boost. That's good enough. Up we go. Uh, whenever you have to make jumps that are a bit taller than you can normally reach, you actually have to build up some speed to get some extra height sometimes. So, um, and that's very important in a number of areas because otherwise you're just going to get stuck in a little area and you just you keep frantically trying to jump up and it's just a, a big pain in the butt. One, two, three. And up we go. Yeah, this is an example of a, a place that's very difficult to, uh, to make use of your super speed in time. But uh, there we go. We are ugh, past, okay, great. I got past the stupid, the stupid spring. That is, uh, it's like my least favorite spring in the whole game. Well, okay, that's my least favorite spring in the whole game because that one accidentally takes you to a bonus stage. There are two types of special stages in this game. Um, the first one, this is Jung Rock, it's boring. Also, we got a uh, fast music glitch. I don't even, it just happens sometimes. Um, the first type of bonus stage that you'll probably find uh, more commonly, especially just at the very beginning of episode one, um, if you collect a bonus gem, you'll pick up uh, and be able to play a bonus stage, which is kind of like Sonic 3's, but different. But you have that perspective and stuff. Um, and in the second one, you can find actual secret levels that have like tons of ammo in them. That is not the speed that this music is supposed to be played at. We'll probably hear it correctly here. There it is. That, that was going like double speed. That's crazy. Even the music wants to join in in the fasts. Because I don't, yeah, I don't even get super speed in these levels. So I don't, I've normally never heard Jung Rock going at hyper. So, but no, this is this is a, an intensely boring stage. So uh, if you have a donation. Sounds good to me. Perhaps also feeling the speed is H. Fowler Thorin, who donates $100 and says, here's to beating cancer faster. Like the sound of that. Slug RBTV says, uh, with their $100 donation, just wanted to thank all the staff, the volunteers, and of course, uh, the runners for their work. All right. Now coming up is the best boss, because watch this. Oh, I, okay, well, he did have time to land, but he's normally not supposed to have time to land, but he, he's a trooper. He really tries. You can actually just stand in the same exact location that you start, and he will never hurt you. Um, so even if you're not going fast, he's an incredibly easy boss. All right, so episode five, starting with Marvorella, is where the game really kicks it into high gear, trying to make use of damage boost. Yeah. Trying to make use of damage boost. I'll try again, take two. Great, okay, cool. I just wanted to show that we can damage boost. I still know how to do video games. Come on. Great. Oh. Yeah, sometimes you gotta spam. Usually I just kind of forget that there's even enemies around and I'll just kind of absentmindedly press the, the shoot button just to make sure that I've not forgotten somebody. And there we go. A lot of fun ways to exit levels. Quick damage boost there to get past all of these guys. Oh, yeah, it's Temple of Nick. Uh, Nick Stadler, I think, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I got that right, um, was the uh, animator for this game. Who did, uh, apparently did all the artwork in addition to all of the, uh, the basic, uh, you know, video game art that you see. There's actually a comic book that came with Jazz Jackrabbit when it first came out, which was pretty cool. And it talks about the parrot and stuff. I don't know. It's <laughs> There's actually a reference to Sonic the Hedgehog in it. Pretty great. 
The 90s, man, 90s gaming had something. I mean, this, this game was developed by like four people-ish. I mean, and then you include, you know, people that just like publish the game and stuff. There we go. I should not have risked that. I only have one HP. I should have picked up the carrot from earlier. Good. I'm just gonna take that a bit slow, but not too slow because that tree's gonna shoot me. Yum. Those guys, I just, I just like to shoot them fast because sometimes things go badly and you just fall way down. All right, Slugging has some fun stuff in it. Particularly the first two jumps into the, the main temple area. For instance, right there, I just jumped on a spike. Kind of like when you can jump on, uh, well, through the, uh, the bouncers in, uh, for instance, Orbitus. You can also jump on spikes and they don't hurt you. So that comes in handy. I like it. Some super speed right here. It is ever so slightly faster to use the super speed there than it is just to run to the right and finish the level. And then right here, if I can get it. Ah, not quite. But you can start to fall and then magically rise onto the, uh, that floating little brick there. Now right here is a secret route that requires you to shoot down. And very few weapons would ever really allow that to happen. So I, I don't really know what they were thinking with that shortcut, but I'm glad it's there because it's, it's faster. It's very much faster. All these turtles, by the way, this is the reason I have to spam in this area. If it's just the slugs, it's fine, but freaking <laughs> all the little turtles just make it like ridiculously annoying to, to try to get through that area normally. Okay, so coming up is the obligatory water level. Everybody's happy to have obligatory water levels. And there's that, look at that speed. Aren't we going fast now? Oh yeah. And we got a snorkel, just to breathe. I don't, I don't think that's how snorkels work, but it's just fine, it's fine. Video games. All right, so coming up is the trick that was discovered like two days ago? I don't know, some, something really early. But we do normally go this way. However, you can actually shoot this from the other side and that just skips a lot. We used to skip a portion of the level anyway to reach that, but um, turns out you can go even faster. So that's pretty awesome. A uh, recent runner, Simon Nair, that's N-A-A-R, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing the Nair correctly, or Nair, some, I don't know. <laughs> um, but he's recently been, been dis dissecting the game a bit and, and finding these bits and pieces to make the run even faster. He currently has the record, by the way. Come on, and a damage boost, great. Okay, so Dream Pipes 2 is really boring, so few donations would, would even work in this one. Absolutely. We have a $75 donation from Punitor. It says, happy to see Jazz Jackrabbit being run. Brings back memories of playing the shareware version over and over again when I was little. This is for my mother who beat cervical cancer a few years ago. Runner's choice. Another comment as well, talking about the series. Fancy donated $10 and says, even though I grew up on Jazz Jackrabbit 2, I love this series. And somewhere deep in my heart, I hope for a re-release of the JJ series. Thanks, Cap and Clever, for making this run entertaining. With this donation, I'd like to give a little push to Binary, the only one, to my knowledge, running JJ2. Thanks, everyone, for the event and what you're doing. Keep up the work. You can give him one more, actually. Sure. Hoppy actually just donated $125. Says, I don't know what the animals are about, but no, don't kill the bunnies. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, a little... From what I know, uh, the only runner for a while on this particular game was Vortail, who also ran Jazz Jack Rabbit 2. Um, but he is he is basically retired, and uh, Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 has been taken over by other players, and Jazz Jack Rabbit 1 has been taken over by other players. So that's that's cool to see the, the legacy continue, basically. Okay, so for this part, when we're going super fast, we want to make sure that we get to these um, buttons as quickly as possible. Ooh, I was really close to soft locking there. Okay. Um, if you push the buttons in the wrong order, ah, just, just, okay, thank you. Gosh, I hate this part on super speed. If I get through it, I'm always like, but do I continue then or do I just wait for it to leave? Because there's a lot of enemies in the way. And it's just a big pain in the butt. All right. But, um, but yeah, Vortail came up with the bulk of the, the current existing route. And he'll, he has, um, you have him to thank for the, the final trick that we'll be doing in the run that we'll see in a few minutes. Phew, okay, Owl Boss is taken care of, great. 
Uh, just get hit. Great. Oh, I slightly off. I usually get hit there early and then just hop on and use the iframes to just kind of finish it. Okay, so episode six. I said episode five is where it really starts kicking in gear. Episode six is where it absolutely kicks it into mega gear. Uh, and I've already unfortunately messed up the first half of the level. You you really need to keep the correct pace in order to get past some of the uh, particular uh, spiky, spinny things. Okay, well, at least that was in the right spot. I'll just wait on these, I guess. Up, up. Okay, there we go. Great. And up we go. And past you. Oh, and then that happens. Yeah, the game's acceleration is really confusing. Uh, sometimes the game doesn't even know that it's supposed to be doing things. Um, so, for instance, I should have just made that jump, but the game said, oh, you're on the wrong frame. So, uh, I guess according to acceleration rules that are completely arbitrary, uh, you don't make that jump. So, oh, well. Ah, that's fine. Thankfully, I have extra health for this. Well, I was going to damage boost, but okay, I guess I don't even need to do that. Going to grab the invincibility to make this a little bit safer. Simon tries to do this if he has extra health, but I just, I don't, I don't see, I don't see it saving like one and a half seconds to just get the invincibility. But Pezrock has a lot of those spinny, spinny ball chain thingies. I don't even, that's what they are, right? That's what they are. Good. And then we get uh, another hoverboard use. Everybody loves hoverboards. It's the 90s. Marty McFly, that was the 80s. Um, yeah, but it's still good. It's still cool. It's still relevant, and that was that was the entire use of it. Like I said, this game's very non-linear. So when you just kind of see sections that just happen like that, it's because you were supposed to explore a lot. But I'm trying to go fast here. Okay, uh, one donation would be good. We actually have a $750 donation from that's from the Terp fan. The Turf fan says, love GDQ. It reminds me of how much trouble I had as a kid playing these games. They also say they lost their grandmother to stage four liver cancer on their 14th birthday. What a sad day it was I'm donating so that no one has to lose a loved one to cancer. Mega agree to that. Oh, up we go. Okay, cool. So we got some damage boosts here. These two levels, I love it because the music's really like super tense. And the, uh, the run is super tense at this point, too. Getting through these levels is, especially the next one. I'm going to go for the, the, the super hard thing because this is such a great pace. But um, good. So we're going to go for three damage boosts, mostly in a row here. One. And two. And three. Get past all of those. So now I'm on one health, and we're going to go through some really dangerous stuff. So I'm going to have to take it a little bit slow, but I will do my best to go fast. Ooh, and I don't have... Uh... Hoi! Okay, great. I don't actually have the, uh, the bouncer, so I'm going to have to wait this one out. You can kill him a lot faster if you have a launcher, but there we go. And bam, and bam. Okay, great. So now we're good with the level. Phew! Oh, that was... That was really stressful. Okay, but we made it. We made it. Great. Oh, man. Because so far, Deathless, I mean, Deathless is a good time. A good, 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 good run. Well, it'll probably be a good time. But so far, I've been having good with this run. Now, this sounds like, holy crap, we're like in mega ultra boss mode. And we're in these giant battleships with bees in them. Um, these levels are incredibly easy in the speed run. For reasons we will find out in just a moment. First, to get to this boss, it's pretty easy. There are actually bosses in these levels. Although, they're really just mini bosses. They're like eye thingies, uh, laser eye whatevers. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this really carefully because I don't want to mess this up. Okay, great. Shoot until it dies. Great. I, I just want to take it safe. Anyway, um, my arm's been hurting for the last, you know, 30 minutes or so. So, I'm just going to do this level one handed. Ugh. Oh, man. Like, when I first learned this run, I did it for a few weeks to, to really super get it ready for GDQ submission, and my arm was just wrecked. All right, I think that's right. No, that's not quite right. Oh, come on, dude. Be a pal, parrot. Okay, that sounds right. All right, cool. Ah, finally putting in the, the duty here. I'm, I'm so glad that the parrot turned out to be useful. 
<sighs> and that's the level. That's a really painful level if you don't get to do that. That's a that's Vortail's trick that, that he definitely found out that was incredibly helpful. I'm so glad it exists. All right, so final boss. Time will be when we get to the epilogue screen. Let me try to damage boost up here. Perfect. All right, so as soon as the screen changes, we'll be on time. And time. <laughs> what was it? Oh, okay. Cool. Very cool. Well, I hope I hope you saw that Vortel, because that was a pretty good run. That one's for you, buddy, and uh, and for Simon too, who's put a lot of effort into uh, to really tightening this game. It's still happening. Like I said, there was a new strat in Dream Pipes, like one, two days ago. So uh, there, there's a lot of stuff to, to see in this game. I myself have yet to actually get a sub 30, just because even small mistakes can, can really mess up the entire schism of, the, of what your speedrun's trying to do. So um, many thanks to Vortel and Simon Nar, and as well as the, uh, the two assisted speedrunners who worked on this game, Mothrius, uh, Alari, and Slamma, um, who came up with a run that's utterly ridiculous it's on turbo difficulty. I would highly recommend watching it just to see the fact that you can you can shoot 30 frames per second, and, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. So uh, once again, thank you, uh, awesome the games done quick for having me. Um, I'm glad to be part of it, and I hope to be back next time. So thank you. Much kudos to Captain Clever there. A fantastic run. As we get ready here now for the next game, which is Jumping Flash 2. A few donations here, but before we do that, just want to mention a sponsor of ours, the Yeti. They're the official T sponsor of Games Done Quick events, and they have been since 2012. 